As we integrate more and more intermittent renewable energy into the power grid, the question of energy storage is becoming more and more important. Well, but to date, lithium ion batteries have received most of the attention, but there are other technologies out there to store electricity. And we're gonna to talk to John Norman, who's the president of HydroStore based out of Toronto, and they have a compressed air storage system. It's very interesting technology. So welcome to the interview, John. Thanks, Markham. It's a pleasure to be here today. Well, look, why don't we start with an overview of, of your technology, if you don't mind? Absolutely. So we're a specifically long duration energy storage provider. And that means that we can provide solutions that allow for a battery discharge, quote unquote, to the grid for greater than six hours. And that's really important on the electricity grid as all these renewables start getting put on the system. When the sun doesn't blow, the wind, or sorry, the sun doesn't shine, the wind doesn't blow, you need to backfill that. We can store that electricity, put it back on the grid when it's important and uh, allow for the grid to be fully decarbonized. So markets that we're operating in tend to be those that have a strong decarbonization agenda and a lot of fossil plants are coming offline. Our technology works uh, using compressed air. So that's actually the way we store energy. So we, we run a compressor using off-peak electricity, uh, often surplus, like in Ontario, we have all this excess nuclear. Uh, we store that underground at high pressure, and then it can store indefinitely. When the grid needs it, we run that through an air turbine and we generate electricity. So it's a really, really helpful resource for even direct replacement of coal plants that are retiring. We provide the same sort of synchronous generation that allows for all the voltage support and capacity that's needed. And uh, we can flexibly locate, which is really important for the grid. Now, the flexibly located interests me because where do you find the underground storage caverns? Yeah, that's a great question. So people who are a little bit in, in more in the know on compressed air energy storage would know that this is a resource that isn't new. There's a couple of large scale plants in the world. Uh, and typically what they've done is a little different than our approach, which we actually call advanced compressed air energy storage. It's advanced for two reasons. One is the traditional stuff has to use salt caverns. It needs a really, really large existing cavern. So there's very few locations where it can actually locate. It's also limited because it needs to burn natural gas. So it's, it's a high efficiency gas plant, you know, it's like 4,300 heat rate, but it's still a gas plant. So you haven't seen a lot of traditional compressed air storage resources built because you would probably just build a combined cycle gas turbine. And the reality is we've uh, taken away both those restrictions. So we use heat from our compression process, we store that, we put that into the turbine when it's ready to generate. And then we can also flexibly site because we part of the reason we're called hydrostore is that we use hydrostatic compensation. So we're just using this water reservoir that helps compensate for the air pressure underground. That cavern is actually flooded. And so when the air is going in, the water is being displaced up to the surface. It's being valved off. When we're ready to generate, the water is pushing the air into the turbine. All that to say the reason we do it, it's so much more space efficient. It's constant pressure. We don't need a large volume, which allows us to actually purpose build a cavity underground in bedrock using techniques that are already used in the hydrocarbon storage industry. So we can flexibly locate these where the grid is required, which is a tremendous advantage. Uh, help me understand, uh, John. So you actually uh, use what, uh, 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 like a drill and, and you know, you drill a, a, like a well bore down into a, an underground cavern uh, and that, that's where you would do the storage? Uh, it, sort of. I, so we're actually drilling a shaft, a series of shafts down. They're big shafts. They're about eight foot in diameter, uh, but very well known method. It's used in the oil and gas industry. Uh, and, and that takes us down to our target depth. Our target depth is usually around 1500 meters or so below surface, between 1500 and 2000. So it's, it's, uh, it's pretty deep. Um, or sorry, I'm thinking feet, that's 1500 to 2000 feet. It's about 600 meters below surface. Um, we, we're lowering equipment down through that shaft. That's a standard technique that they use and they, they mine out the rock. 
and bring that to the surface. We reuse it for the reservoir and other site grading. Sometimes it can be used for aggregate as well. It's just clean rock, typically. It's not like we're mining for ore. Uh, and that creates the, the void space. So again, we're really just repurposing a technique that has been used in the hydrocarbon storage industry where they build these caverns out of hard rock. Same, same purpose. Actually, our application is less rigorous. Uh, what about the economics of, of your technology, John? Is, is it competitive with batteries? Yeah, very competitive. Um, it's just, it depends on the actual application. Where you've seen batteries roll out and why they're getting so much press is for shorter duration applications, usually less than four hours. And they're also very fast responding. Like it's just instant uh, response. So that's helpful for smoothing out, you know, a cloud going over like instantaneous variations in solar energy, but it's not good for storing it for long periods of time and providing reliable replacement capacity. So where we're really cost effective is on the long storage durations, greater than four hours, uh, anything greater than four hours and large scale, you know, 200 megawatts or above for us, uh, we're much cheaper than batteries. And for long duration applications, which a lot of markets have already uh, defined as eight hours, we crush batteries on cost. And so even if you take into account the future cost reductions of lithium ion, we're still more cost effective for those applications. So the markets that we're really hitting on are those where long duration storage is already needed or is has identified a need coming, you know, mid decade or later in the decade. So where are your markets, John? Are you, are you doing a lot of business in places like El, Alberta, where intermittent, you know, renewables are uh, penetrating the market fairly quickly? Is it down in the states? Uh, who are your customers? Yeah, it's that's also a great question. I mean, since we're a pretty large scale resource, we're usually most of our projects are between two hundred and five hundred megawatts, so very large infrastructure. Uh, long duration, we're we're global in nature. So we are working on a project in Ontario, uh, which has been funded partially by SDTC and NRCAN, and uh, that's a 500 megawatt project. Interesting market for us because they have all this surplus nuclear generation and they still have a capacity need coming mid-decade. Perfect type of market for us. But we're also very active in the US, in Chile and Australia, which are markets that have had pretty strong long duration storage signals. We're really most advanced in California and Australia. Both of those places, New South Wales in particular, have identified a need for eight hour plus storage. And so we're already in commercial processes for those projects as we speak. Other markets we're growing into. So Alberta is always, you mentioned Alberta, it's been of interest to us. It's not as low hanging a fruit. Uh, we think the economics could be good, but it's also a jurisdiction where, where they won't hesitate to build out natural gas. And so it's, that's not as low hanging fruit for us because part of our value is providing this flexibly located capacity. If you can just build a gas plant to provide that capacity, you may choose to do that. Even though it might not make long-term economic sense, it might make short-term economic sense. In a place like California or Australia or, or certainly parts of Chile, lots of other jurisdictions, they can't do that, either because the plants can't be permitted or because they have a strong decarbonization agenda or the reality is economics. So it's sometimes a combination of all of that. Now, I've had conversations with uh, experts down in California, John, about the, the uh, excess solar that gets produced uh, during the day and they even get sometimes negative uh, electricity prices because of that. And there's a fair amount of interest in California from investors in finding ways of using that excess solar. So it might be turning it into hydrogen with electrolyzers, but it seems to me that your uh, technology would be perfect for that. So I assume that in a market like California, you're anticipating a fair amount of growth. Absolutely. So we, we actually hot off the press today, a press release indicating that uh, we have greater than a thousand megawatts under development and 10 gigawatt hours of storage. That's a couple of projects for us right now, each about 500 megawatts. Uh, they're going to be actually more specifically announced in the near term. But what is driving it is many of the fundamental drivers in the market you mentioned, Markham, which is they have very, very high renewable penetrations already. 
they've identified the regulator there has actually said they need a thousand to sixteen hundred megawatts of eight hour plus storage. So the need is already identified. A lot of the community utilities called uh, community choice aggregators, they've released uh, an RFP for eight hour plus storage, uh, which we actually responded to in the fall. We believe even beyond that opportunity, there's going to be lots more of those. So it's a tremendous growth market for us. Very, very important. Now, I would imagine, just be the final question, uh, John, this has uh, been a fascinating uh, peek into your, uh, into your industry. Uh, I would imagine that the announcements made by President Biden in the last couple of months, and particularly uh, his uh, promise to decarbonize the U.S. grid 100% carbon emissions free by 2035, uh, there'll be a rush to integrate wind and solar and other uh, intermittent sources. My goodness, that sounds like a perfect opportunity for HydroStore. It is indeed. Uh, and so it's a, it's a really strong confluence of both state policy. States are in different positions, California more ahead, but lots of other places we're, we're looking, Virginia, uh, even parts of the Southeast, uh, Arizona, like there's lots of places with drivers for long duration, coupled with that federal agenda coming through the Biden administration. Uh, we're strongly supportive of his policies. Uh, he's actually explicitly called out energy storage as being a critical infrastructure going forward. So we expect to see a couple of things. We expect to see a, a solar, um, well, a storage specific, not just relying on solar, uh, storage specific input tax credit uh, that's already working its way through Washington. Uh, and we expect to see a lot of funding coming through the DOE. So when you're in states like California, that actually is just accretive to us. We're also working with the DOE already on a loan guarantee program for our California, one of our California projects. So um, lots of opportunities with the Biden administration. I completely agree. And the only point I would add, actually, is it, since we're sitting here in Canada, I think that's a tremendous opportunity for the provinces and for the Trudeau government. Uh, you know, the Trudeau administration has already started announcing policies, which is great. I think the provinces are catching up a little bit, uh, but I think they it's not like they're going to be so far ahead of the curve. In fact, they risk being left behind by the Biden administration and others. So the time to get on the, the storage bandwagon is is really increasing. But John, it's, it's really exciting to see Canadian uh, technology like this uh, get at such a, a big foothold in, in this particular market. And, and kudos uh, to you and your, your team at HydroStore. Thank you very much for your insights. Really appreciate this. Thank you, Markham. I really appreciate the time and thanks for putting this together.